What's going on everyone? Welcome back to More Salt. Today I'm sharing with you an amazing recipe for Valentine's Day. It is a homemade ravioli filled with delicious tofu ricotta and it's gonna come with a beet and sun-dried tomato sauce. Not only does the sauce pair perfectly with the ravioli, but it is a beautiful, vibrant, and bright pink color that is perfect for Valentine's Day. This recipe does take a little bit more time and effort than my other recipes, but you gotta put in a little bit more effort for your honey, am I right? Some of you might know that traditionally fresh pasta is made with eggs, but vegan pasta made without eggs tastes just as good, and I promise you no one will be able to tell the difference. So let's get started with the dough. For the dough, you're gonna need three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You can use white flour or whole wheat flour. I just use normal white flour. To the flour, you're also gonna add in one teaspoon of salt. Whisk that together. Then you're gonna make a little well with your hands. And to the middle of the well, you're gonna add one cup plus a quarter cup of warmish to lukewarm water. And about one to two tablespoons of olive oil. You can slowly start mixing together with a wooden spoon the dry ingredients with the wet. And once it becomes too thick, you can start kneading the dough with your hands. And then transfer to a floured flat surface and continue to knead. until it forms a nice sticky ball. Then you're gonna wrap your dough in plastic wrap or a dish towel and let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. And in the meantime, we can make the rest of our ingredients. So we'll start with our tofu ricotta. So to make your tofu ricotta, you're gonna start by pressing your tofu to get all the excess liquid out of it. And you can do this by placing your block of tofu in between two thick layers of paper towels or dish towels and put them in between two plates and stick something heavy on top of it. So I'm just using a cast iron skillet. You can also use like huge textbooks or big cans that you have lying around in your kitchen, whatever has a lot of weight to it. And you're gonna let that sit for about 30 minutes until most of the liquid has been squeezed out of the tofu. Once your tofu is good to go, you can add it to a food processor. along with one small head of roasted garlic, three quarter cups of caramelized onions, and I caramelize these onions in white wine, agave, and a little bit of salt, a handful of fresh parsley and fresh basil, the zest of one lemon, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, a few pinches of salt, and a hefty amount of freshly cracked pepper. You're gonna start blending that together in your food processor and slowly start adding in one to two tablespoons of almond milk or soy milk to make your ricotta extra smooth and creamy. After you're done making this recipe, you will probably have some extra tofu ricotta left over and that is totally okay because it goes so well with a lot of different things. I like making stuffed shells, you can make vegan lasagna, you can even spread some on a piece of crusty bread with some slices of tomato, or you could even put it on a salad. Next, we're gonna start making our colorful beet sauce. So for this recipe, to a high-speed blender, you're going to add one medium red beet that's been cooked all the way through. You can either roast it or steam it, and you want to peel it and trim it as well. Half cup of soaked cashews, one cup of almond milk, a quarter cup of sun-dried tomatoes that have been soaking in hot water for 10 to 15 minutes to soften them up a little bit, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, two and a half teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, and a couple of pinches of salt. So now that we have our beet sauce and tofu ricotta, we can go ahead and make our raviolis. So to make your ravioli, you're gonna take your ball of dough that's been resting and you're gonna cut it in half and we're only gonna work with half of it at a time just because it's easier to manage. And you're gonna roll it out on a nicely floured surface. The key to success with this recipe and so that you don't have deformed ravioli is to make sure that you use enough flour on the surface that you're working on so that nothing gets stuck. And if you have a rolling pin, by all means use it, but you guys know how I roll. I use a wine bottle, so that's what I'm using because I don't have a rolling pin. Now when you're rolling out your dough, you want it to be as thin as you can get it. You don't want it to be too thin, paper thin, where if you work with it and form your raviolis, it'll break on you, but you want it to be thin enough so that when you cook it, boil it in water, it cooks all the way through, 
and so that it's easy to work with and doesn't break on you and all that stuff. Once your dough is rolled out, we can go ahead and start cutting our pieces for the ravioli. Now you can use a number of different things when making ravioli. I am personally using a stamp thingy, my bob, and it works great. And it's really inexpensive. This was probably about four or five dollars at an Italian market. You can get them online. Usually they have them at Italian markets and they might even have them at your local grocery store. So go ahead and stamp out your raviolis. These are gonna be really small raviolis. So feel free to get a bigger stamp or ravioli maker thing. Um, these are gonna be like really small. This was like the only one I could find. And once you've stamped out all of your ravioli, you can take the scraps and mush them back together, let them sit for five or 10 minutes and roll them out again and repeat the whole process over again so that there's no waste. So once all your ravioli are stamped out, you can go ahead and start filling them with the tofu ricotta. So you're gonna put a little spoonful in the middle and you don't wanna overstuff them. You know that they're overstuffed when you try to put the other layer of the ravioli on top and it just doesn't seal correctly. That means you added a little bit too much. So just feel it out, try a couple out and figure out the right size that works with the size of your ravioli. To finish your ravioli, you can dip your finger in some warm water, run it around the outside, and then place another layer of pasta and then press with your fingers so that it seals. And that is how you make ravioli, my friends. To finish the ravioli, you're going to boil them in water for two to three minutes. You know they're done cooking when they start to float to the top. You can go ahead and check one, cut it open, try it, make sure that the dough is fully cooked through. You can plate it with your beet sauce and some fresh parsley or basil. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. I really hope you enjoyed the recipe and I really hope your boo things at home appreciate all the time and effort you put into making those raviolis. That is true love, my friend. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, comment down below telling me what you think, if you're gonna try this at home, and if you did, what you thought of it. And if you end up making it at home, make sure that you snap a pic because this is a beautiful dish, if I do say so myself. I wanna see it. Tag me on social media. My Instagram is at more salt please. You can also find me on Facebook, more salt please. You can Snapchat me, whatever you want. I would love to see your food creations. Don't forget to take care of yourself this week, eat good food, and I will see you in the next one. Happy Valentine's Day.